Hello. So with this third installment of the Pi Game tutorial series, I plan on covering actually, well, what is it? It's called, how do I move an image? So it talks about setting up a little few background tiles and moving an image over those background tiles. Maybe if you think of like a old clunky RPG or something like the very most primitive steps into getting to something like that. So this is at the Pi Games tutorial or the Pi Games org docs tutorial move it um, little tutorial thing if you go to help contents and then we go down to tutorials down here there's introduction to Pi Game which I did in the first or second installment briefly touched on the first installment um, and that goes over making that ball bounce around a little window about this big and then after that you have import and initialize which that I may come back and like I'll pick up these features that's really not worth taking a whole bunch of time on it's good to know stuff but the next major thing to do is really come in here and how do I move an image so Going over this and kind of just, I mean, of course, you're more than welcome to come in here and read this word for word, which I'd recommend doing just to help give a little bit more perspective on it and everything. But I'm just going to sort of cherry pick. And what they didn't do in this one is they didn't actually show the image stuff. They just sort of like describe it theoretically more down here. And so I wanted to build that bridge between those things of actually like showing how like making a few tiles and making some movement and erasing and moving a little character tile a little bit. So that's the scope of this one here. So just pixels on the screen. This uh, section really could have gone down a little bit further in the tutorial, but it's just the main takeaways here are that uh, when you quote unquote blit an image onto the screen, you are simply changing the colors of the pixels on the screen. Pixels aren't added or moved. We just change the color of the pixels already on the screen. These images you blit on the screen are also surfaces in Pygame. And in the last tutorial, I covered a little bit on a surface. What that is, it's just, you know, it's like if you think of a little image on a little slide or something, but like a digital slide, that's basically what a surface is. It's, it's an image in Python and Pygame, you know, because they're not going to just take in a a PNG or a GIF file and use it exactly byte for byte how a GIF file is stored in the file. What they'll want to do is they'll want to, uh, you know, convert it to something probably way more primitive in the background and something that it is to their liking. You know, just like if you think about maybe uh, plain text file formats and encodings, you know, you can have Unicode 16 or UTF 16, uh, UTF 8, all that kind of stuff. And neither one's necessarily worse than the other but depending on which context you're using it in UTF-16 might be better than UTF-8 or vice versa um, what it is is usually UTF-16 is more efficient for the most part for handling stuff internally within a program because then you don't have to deal with the like testing if there might be multi bytes or not um, I guess in UTF-16 there could be multi-bytes, so maybe I should say like UTF-32, where you know you're going to use, you're going to do the trade-off, that time-space trade-off, which is important across computing, especially in video games, where you decide, okay, I'm going to use a lot of memory per character. I'm going to use a lot of 32 bits per, you know, text character on the screen, and that way I can hold any text character that the computer could possibly handle. And you don't have to check if it's a multi-byte character or not. In UTF-16, you can kind of get away with that if you use like the basic multi-plane and you know stick within the ranges of that a lot of the world uses. Um, but yeah, then of course there's that trade-off that it's going to take up more space. So if you have a document that has a thousand characters in it, it's going to take you know instead of just one thousand bytes, it's going to take four times that much. So it's going to take four thousand bytes. But you'll be able to move through that data by trading off that space, trading out that space, you'll be able to save time in moving through that data. So 
why was I exactly describing this like that? So that's what, what the surface is that they use, that surface object. What they're doing is they're basically saying, hey, nobody in the outside world, very few people probably know how to read. Uh, if you were just to save this surface object into some file format that is like exactly representative of the bytes that are used internally in the program as a surface object, that's probably not good for exchanging data. Um, that's probably more like UTF-16 or UTF-32 where internally it's going to be more efficient for you because you don't have to constantly like think what kind of image file is this, da da da. You just know this is this generic surface format that you like or in our case we don't have to really worry about that. I'm just kind of briefly talking about what's sort of going on behind the scenes in Pygame. And then, uh, you know, if you want to exchange with the outside world of course that's where like utf-8 in the text file format comes into play that's going to be more compact and efficient in general um and it sort of like it will try and lean towards that 8-bit encoding if it can especially for english of course so a thousand character document could potentially just be a thousand bytes and oftentimes in the western world it is but uh then there's 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 trade-offs but anyway i don't want to get too crazy confusing into that so surfaces are better for internal management whereas like a gif or a png or jpeg or whatever is going to be better for sending files like across a network instead of using them internally so that's basically what they're getting at with that and when they are blended to the screen they are copied into the display but you still have a unique copy of the original um, anyway, that I think that covers it. And then the another important thing is that we erase image data before drawing it in a new position. So you could really draw it in the new position and then erase it, but that usually creates a blurring effect or a trailing effect because you'll see both images on the screen for a second. But for some reason, if we erase it first, um, maybe if you consider the decay time of the colors of the pixels on monitors and our eyes and stuff like that and just whatever effects and then move it really quick we don't seem to notice that blank we don't seem to notice a flicker versus the blur effect if that makes sense so that's that's the typical procedure is to blit it in a position erase it move it and blit it again that's how you move an image so like they're saying, let's go back a step because really that was sort of jumping to more of the meat of what this whole tutorial is about. But what they're going to do here is, and we're going to kind of follow along loosely, is that uh, to create just a screen list. So what this is, is this represents like tiles in a video game, you know, like 100 by 100 pixel tiles. This is an older tutorial, so they were using 10 pixel tiles, but in this day and age like 10 pixel tiles are smaller like maybe the size of these little icons in here I think are at least a 16 by 16 so even on my display that's set at a really low resolution setting right now um, so for our purposes I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up by a factor of 10 and you know instead of doing 10 by 10 we're gonna do 100 by 100 and that will give us something a little bit more like you know a little more reasonable size for this example. So anyway, on modern screens, which are roughly double or more the resolution of they were back, this was written when probably 800 by 600, I'd imagine was like probably the most common screen ratio at that time. And now uh, 1366 by 768 is the most popular, roughly, and maybe even a little bit bigger. So even on cell phones but um cell phones of course are not necessarily that high of resolution but they they tend to be resolution dense these days so whatever on your screen you can adjust accordingly if if you want to feel free to uh you know after we go through this to of course expand or contract on any of this stuff so anyway they're going to create a small python list of six numbers and imagine it represents some fast fantastic graphics that's what this is and I'll go ahead and get a little Python interpreter open over here. Let me kind of just stretch that a little bit. Just get the most I can out of it. Okay. 
So if you just think this is a one dimension, normally, of course, most games are going to be two dimensional. Not all, but I would say, well, guess most games are going to be at least two dimensions. But what they do to keep it simple is they just do this one dimension list. So you could think of each of these numbers in here as representing a tile, like uh, one could be a dirt tile and two could be a grass tile. So you have dirt, dirt, grass, 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 and then uh, dirt at the end, right? And then if it was a two-dimensional array, you'd have another row with like dirt, grass, dirt, dirt, or whatever, you know, for your level, right? So we'll go ahead and just follow along sort of and create screen equals one comma one comma uh, two, two, two comma one. So six tiles, index, zero based indexing, so it'd be zero through five. And then if we type screen, we can see there it is. We got dirt, dirt, grass, 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 dirt. Okay, and then they come down here and they say, how about if we drop in a so-called like player character? So what we'll do is, um, they just go ahead and use the number eight, but I'm gonna bump it up a little, you know, I, I'm just following along loosely, so I'm kind of shifting it a little more how Give it a little more optimal feel in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a player that's constant style because we're just going to give it its initial value and it's always going to stay that. It's going to be the number eight. And then what we can do is we can go screen at index three, position three, which would be the fourth uh, position over because it's zero, one, two, three. We want to make that equal to our player character. And then if we do screen, we can see now the players dropped in. So the players covering effectively over that uh, grass tile, right? The player tile is. So then we come down here and they talk about making this player move. And to do that, we need a position. So we're gonna say position equals um, three like they do. And then screen position equals player. So this should move the player onto this, uh, th over this tile effectively, because it's zero, one, two. Oh no, that should put it right where it's at, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly the same for this one. Okay, and then we're gonna go position minus equals one, and then that will make uh, position now equal to two, which will be zero, one, two, and make the player cover that tile if we click on this line and then hit enter to copy it down here and then enter again and then I'll type screen so you can see there it is it's moved over here but we also have that trailing effect where we still we didn't erase our old player so that's what they talk about here now we see two um, one in the old position so what we need to do is create a background mapping you know because obviously we're mutating the screen values effectively so we need to have like some sort of background map that we can refer to so that when we change something whenever you need to remember whenever you want your game or your program to remember something you remember stuff with memory of course so we need to to reserve a little bit of memory and create a let me go down here we're going to create a background and I'm capitalizing it to represent the fact that we intend it to be sort of like a constant because we're just going to give it that initial value and we don't plan on manipulating it. This is going to stay static. And so because of that, in Python specifically, I'm going to use a tuple because that is considered a non-mutated, a non-mutable object. In other words, something that we're not going to change, unlike the square bracket list. And so that should be more optimal, a little more optimal for reading and stuff like that because it doesn't have to consider whether or not we're going to change it. And we'll just put the same original values in there. That was one, one, two, 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 one, just like that. And then if we do background, we can see there it is. Dirt, dirt, grass, 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 dirt. Okay. And then what we can do now, what, what do they have here? We'll kind of follow along. So we've done that. We don't really need to initialize the screen to black right there. I think that's kind of a wasted step. They say a new blank screen, but whatever, that's... And then we can say for i in the range of the length of the background list or tuple, whatever you want to call it. So that's saying we're getting the length of the background, which should be six. 
and this is creating a range which will get, return us 0 through 6 and then for each one of those numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or sorry not 0 through 6 but 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values we're going to say screen dot blit now this is where we basically go back to that first section in the beginning where they were talking about blitting and we're going to blit the background tiles the background tile for each iteration through that's at whatever index so we're effectively going to go through the background and you know do blit dirt or yeah what's that what we're calling it? dirt dirt grass 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 dirt like that and we're going to do that at i times or no not i times 100 right how are they doing it yeah, they're just doing it like that. Oh, we're not even supposed to be doing screen blit. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, we just do a screen. The screen at that index equals the background at that index. Sorry, I was getting way ahead of myself there. And then so what that, it did exactly what I was saying basically, but I was just starting to type it out in a little bit more complex manner. So if we look at screen now, it's effectively reset. It's no longer this, uh, it doesn't have those two player characters on there anymore. It's just got the, the original tiles. So that's cool. That's just basically got us back to where we were. And then now we can manipulate this position and say uh, player position equals three, position equals three, and then uh, screen at that position we want to set to the player character which is that 8 so we'll do that's all that player just gets replaced with the 8 of course so there it is again back to right there and now making the hero move properly so now picking up where we left off instead of making the player blur what we want to do is just say uh, screen we want to erase the original character so we'll say screen at that position is going to equal the original background at that position. So for a split second in a real video game, it would be like that. But um, not even necessary to display, but just for some tiny fraction of a second, it's like, okay, we erase it off of that background invisible surface back there. And then we want to move that. So we'll say position minus equals one and then we can say screen position uh, the new the new uh, minus one so it should be at that square zero one two position now we're going to go ahead and put the player there now and so if we go to screen we can see the characters effectively moved from there to erased to there so that's what's going on with that and then now if we want to continue to move the character we could just follow that little pattern of erase and replace with the background and we can see in the screen and then move the position oops enter enter so now position is equal to one which is that second one over and then we want to go ahead and pit the player go ahead and paint the player over that and then if we look at the screen we can see there it is with no blurring characters so one more time it's Erase the background, uh, move the position of the player, and paint the player. And then we can take a look at it. And there we are, now we're in the very first box. So what do you think would happen if we do one more where we go effectively past below index zero? So let's try it out. We'll do erase, move, and then plot the player and then look at what happened. It's way over here. Because that's in Python, a negative index will start over there. So you could really just keep going with Python, right? Um, so anyway, moving along here. Definition of blit. So they go back over that term one more time. Displaying graphics, we use the term blit frequently. Basically means to copy graphics from one image to another. A more formal definition is to copy an array of data or an array of pixel data to a another array of pixel data basically and whenever you hear the term bitmap that just means digital image related so 
Um, you can think of it as just assigning pixels, which is you're, we're basically flipping pixel values. We're altering pixel color values more than we are moving, but moving is the more human effect that we feel that's going on. But we're not actually so much moving realistically. We're just manipulating values. So it's more advanced than straight copy. I don't think it's really worth stressing on that stuff. So going from the list to the screen. So now here's where stuff gets a lot cooler. So what they have here is they've replaced that, uh, you know, this one, one, whatever stuff with terrain, terrain one, terrain one, terrain two, terrain two, terrain two, terrain, and all that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, I'm just going to close that to kind of clear it out and clean it back up there. And we'll go new file. And uh, we always need to import Pygame and then initialize the modules. And then we'll set up basically that same static data we had before. So we had a player character, but now instead of it equaling, this is where it starts. We're going to go ahead and cross that bridge. And it's going to be, instead of it just being that simple number eight, we're now going to load an image. So we'll use Pygame Library's uh, image module and the load function in there. And I'm on Windows, so I'll do a C. Or no, actually, I'm... I. I'm going to save this file into the same directory with the images so I shouldn't really have to type out a complete path because it will just be right there in the current our current modules directory. So that will be called player.png. And this is how I made these tiles. So here's the tiles right here. I have, you know, a player tile and the same size as, you know, the grass tile and the dirt tile and then here's our what will be our game module file. And what I did to do that was I just, I mean, you can use like virtually any paint program, right? And you'll want to come in and resize that in pixels. Um, and I made it 100 by 100. And then what I did was just come in here, grab the yellow bucket tool, paint that in, and then switch it to black, grab the oval tool. And uh, I went ahead and set it to like crayon effect or whatever, just to give it a slight fanciness. And then I draw like an eye and I can zoom in down here. And so I click away, that eye is fine. And then select that there and control C, control V. So I get a second eye. And uh, so there's my two eyes. And then to do the mouth, I'll do this little line thing right here. Just go across like that and pull it down a little bit like that. And that's basically what I did to create that face. And uh, then to create the ground tiles, I select brown, the bucket. You're welcome to do whatever you want, of course. And then I select some of these colors, get the pencil, and just give it some scribbles on there. And grab a few, get a few different ones, and give it some scribbles. Like that, and then I go back to brown. And then I just kind of like go just run it really fast running this pencil across here to uh, try and break up the lines. So instead of looking like lines, they look more like specks. And I just keep doing that, keep scribbling over with that plain brown background color until I feel like, you know, I sort of have this generic texture that's not going to look too repetitive or whatever. And for the green, I did pretty much the same thing. I just came over here, grabbed this bucket, painted that green. Then I grabbed this light green, switched back to that pencil, gave it a scribble or three across it, and then switched back to that dark green with the pencil and do this, oh, and do the same thing where I just come back through with that background color and just sort of erase as much of that to where just looks like more generic speckles. So I'm happy with that. I mean, obviously, for a real game, you probably want to give it some more polish than this, but this is just a quick way to make a fun little 100 by 100 pixel tile for that. 
and then I save that this one is uh, ground B I save the first one as ground A and then I save the face as player.png so that's how you can get that stuff so I'm loading in player.png I'm gonna load in ground A and then that's gonna be pretty similar code right here and this one I had named ground A just to be consistent that's way easier for sure and then I can just copy this bring it down one and switch this to ground B okay so that loads all those if you want to just hit F5 save it and run it okay so what it's going to try and do is save and run it from the program files Python directory which not a very good idea so I'll you know navigate to whatever folder you want you know your downloads folder or whatever anywhere you want to save it is wherever you save your images and uh, for me this happens to be this folder yours definitely doesn't have to be the same I come in here I've got a Pi game folder in there and this new folder this is where I'm saving everything and I'll save that there yeah that was just an old run through make sure I knew what I was talking about and my voice the volume is going to kind of fluctuate because Pi game automatically initializes as an audio library which kind of interferes with my microphone recording so my apologies about that um, so now what we're going to do is a background just like before and this background is still going to be a list or a tuple more specifically tuple whatever you want to call it and it's going to now effectively just like how they filled theirs with terrain we're going to fill ours with these ground deals over here so we'll do six of those and I'll just copy and paste to save some type in here one two three four five six and then so that first one is ground A, ground A, ground B, B, which were like the twos, but now they're being replaced with A's and B's, and then that first one again. Okay, and you can save and run as much as you want to make sure that you don't get, you know, if you get the blue stuff right here, if you are running in idle, the, uh, the built-in Python integrated development and learning environment then that's what you can run if you want to run your stuff just like this I have the uh, dark color theme which if you go to configure idle and uh, go over to highlights I've got it on uh, well if you go to built-in theme and drop this down and pick dark and then I went up here and clicked on this one and set the color for Oh, I guess I didn't set the color there. Choose color four, and I chose like a gray, like that. And uh, I don't need to save it because I are you can if you do all that. And I just save it as dark gray with comments, and then I don't have the ugly red comments. I have the nice little gray ones, and then click apply OK or whatever. But I'm going to cancel out because I've already got mine set. And yeah, so everything's blue. It's not red errors. So that's a sort of a cheap test driven manual test driven development style right there and so that sets up all of our static sort of constant values that we're going to use and now what we want to do is actually open up a pi game display window so to do that we'll call it screen i'm not going to capitalize this because uh, that's not going to be a true constant it's going to be an object that is able to be uh, mutated and manipulated so keeping that fashion we'll call it lowercase screen and you know this is going to replace that screen list but it's for the most part going to have a lot of the same effect slight little bit more complexity but you know just stepping that up and this is going to be the screen's going to equal a pi game display and we're going to set the mode on it to how many pixels we want and to do that, we'll pass it a tuple, and we'll say 600, comma 100, and that's the reason the double parentheses is because it's a tuple. Otherwise, it will—it's a function, and it will evaluate it as two separate integers. But we want to say, hey, treat this as one 
value pair, right? Okay, so, and the reason the 600 by 100 is because there's six values, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then those images are 100 pixels across. So now we're not just dealing with like plain text, you know, character number things like we were before. We're dealing with 100 pixel images. So thinking about it in that, um, you can very easily translate it from that that last mode where we had the six values, but we're effectively multiplying that. That's like this is effectively six times 100 right there for that value, right? Because we have those six values and they're, they're 100 pixels each. So now we're in pixel land instead of uh, text character land. And then 100 is because we have uh, 1 times 100 for how many rows we want. We only want one row. You know, we're doing this one-dimensional thing, right? So if we wanted two rows, it would be 200. But we're doing one row of, you know, their uh, their squares, right? They're 100 pixels across and 100 pixels down. So that's where we end up with the 100 there. And we can go ahead and run this and look at what we have here. And there it is. So this is now going to be our graphical representation of this down here. So there's kind of like, you can't see it right now, but effectively there's going to be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, totaling six values, right? So I'll come back over here and close that one out. Again, sorry for the audio going back and forth a little bit. Okay, so now where are we with that? So now it was black, right? So we need to assign that screen, those background colors, just like we did down here. So we'll do one of those for loops for the index in uh, range of the length of the background. So that's, you know, we're taking for each one of these things in the background. We want to get, we're just getting the whole length. So that will be six. There's six items in there. And then we're building a range. So that range will give us the value zero through five again. And we're going to say, go ahead and go into that uh, screen. And this time using that more, a little bit slightly more complex function, we're going to blit the screen with the background tile at each one of those indexes starting at zero. So we're going to we're going to blit that to the screen. Then we're going to blit that. So we're going to blit a dirt. We're going to blit another dirt next to it. Then we're going to blit three grasses after that. And then one more final dirt tile. Am I saying the right ones? Yeah. OK. And then the last little value we need to pass to the blit is we need to give it an upper left corner of where to do that blitting. So maybe I should have let this, I'm going to comment this out just for one second, hit F5 to run it, to kind of run it right where it was before. Oops. How is it? I have that commented out. Okay, maybe I have to go for none or something. Okay, that works. So I'm going to slide that one over for now. We'll just leave that there, put that back over here. Okay, let me get rid of this junk. Now we're back where we're at and we can talk about it. So what's going on here is, you know, that background tile will effectively, you know, they're roughly like that big around over here, if you can see my cursor. And uh, it needs to know where to draw each one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, draw it at whatever index value. So the first one will be zero times 100 comma zero and so what's going on here is that the first one zero times 100 is still zero and then this tells it the y value which since we only have one uh, row the y is always going to be zero for throughout the rest of this example because it will never be one or two because we're never going to come down here and draw these rows yet but in the future as your game you know possibly gets likely gets more complex that would be a factor, but in keeping it simple right now, this is the way it is. So that first one, if you remember the origin, like even on Windows and most all computer graphics stuff is gonna be this upper left corner here. 
and that upper left corner is zero zero so if we give it an x value of like whatever it's going to come over that x value and then a y value it's going to come down so for the most part the x value works like we usually think it does in a typical cartesian maybe more traditional cartesian coordinate type of thing but that y value you just have to remember in your mind that that comes down from the top but since we're not using y values it's not a huge deal right now but the only thing to keep in mind is that we're basically not shifting that y value so all of our stuff is staying up here just under this title bar right on that zero row right that's it's the first row but it's indexed at zero and then we're going by hundreds so the first one will be i which will be zero times a hundred will just put us right here at zero 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 times a hundred zero and then y zero so right there and then what it will do is it will paint that background tile and since we loaded the tiles in as surfaces in here, um, it knows, it, it was able to detect during the load that these are 100 by 100, so it knows, go ahead and draw it out, it's 100 pixels, so it will draw it out down to here, and it will do that, and then it will go back through the next iteration of the for loop, in which case it will be on the one number of the range, and it will come in here and it will say grab uh, number one, which will be ground A, and ground A, same deal but this time one times 100 will be 100 so it will come over 100 pixels all the way right here to 100 and then it, it won't go down for the y value and it will paint that out 100 by 100 and uh yeah that's that's what it does so basically the screen blip function all it needs to know is that upper left corner origin just like how the major origin on the screen or the window is right there um also when it goes to paint it's just on a more micro level it's using that same type of a pattern where it's just saying hey give me the where do you want the upper left corner of this image like if you pictured my cursor dragging around one of these things you know it's like where do you want that upper left corner at and so it will come out oh i guess it disappears and it's like okay i'll put that upper left corner there and i'll paint it you know so that's basically what's going on and it knows rectangular wise like when it draws that rectangle it knows to go over a hundred and down a hundred when it does it because of the surface itself so we don't have to pass it the full rectangle and if you do pass it a full rectangle which is possible but a little bit more complex beyond the scope of this right now um it will just pretty much it can ignore those two values or i guess it can use them really but they're unnecessary for what we're doing right this moment okay so by doing that we should effectively fill the background with that background list there so I'm gonna go ahead and hit F5 to run that save it and run it and we can see nothing changed for you if you do it it's your very first time running it like my very first time running it it went ahead and changed them I think that was like a once-off thing because <laughs> then it it won't and the reason is that's totally normal is that um we haven't flipped that buffer to paint you, that's this is we're pointed at an invisible surface right now and it's you know hidden in memory or whatever so to speak and what we need to do is it allows us to write that way we can manipulate potentially lots of objects on the screen if we want but instead of it going oh one and then painting and then another and then painting and then you know constantly doing like a zillion paints which is kind of an expensive operation it just says hey go ahead and do all your writing and do all your stuff kind of light speed in the background there and then when you're done let us know and call us to update it and you can call the, the flip function to flip that invisible tile to the to the visible display and so that's what we're going to do right here. Pi game dot display dot flip. And so by doing this, this will cause it to show us what we have painted on that invisible one back there. And there you can see, there's our tiles. So we have tile one, tile one, tile two, tile two, tile two, tile one, effectively according to that old style list that they had, right? and that's fancy that's that's what we expected so that's good so far so good so now what i'll do here since we're this far along i'll move this one over to here i'll grab this window and i'll put it down here 
And now we can use this one over here to manipulate that one. Go ahead and clear this out a little bit. Okay. So now we need our player on the screen. So we're just following sort of loosely in line with that first section that we did that was all text-based. Now we can sort of use those that logic to uh, chop in our player here. So we know we, we passed in. Now the interpreter, so you know it's effectively like it's ran all this code to right here. And oh, my mouse is freezing up. Okay, it's ran all that code to right there. And uh, and then it's just dumped us off in this shell. But we're still kind of live. You know what I mean? Like we can still manipulate and look at values. Like, hey, let's look at, uh, oops, got to match the case here. So player, player is a surface. So we have player loaded, even though we haven't done anything with it. We're sitting in that state right now. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and let's do this. So all we have to do is the same thing, just like we did with this blit, but we can just replace the background tile. Instead of putting the background tile there, we'll just dump the player in, right? So screen dot blit, and then we're gonna pass it that player uh, tile. And right here, well, actually, before right before I do that, we need to go ahead and create that position variable again. Position, and we'll just set it to three. Um, screen dot blit, and then the player tile, of course. And then right here, what we're going to do now is the position still using that simple primitive value, right, where it's just three instead of like 300 or something complex. So we need to bump it into pixel. We need to give it a factor of how big our tiles are, just like how we did right here with the i times 100. We need to do that also. So we'll pass in the position and then we'll multiply it times 100. And then of course, y is always zero for now. And so now on that invisible thing, yours, the very, very first time you run it, it might go ahead and show it to you right now because it might be allowing you to, um, but that's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. And now you're gonna have to, uh, and this is the normal practice you should do is consider you're writing on that invisible background surface and now you need to tell it hey i'm done writing to that surface for this cycle and go ahead and display it so i can literally just copy this code and paste it right here and i'll show you this window and then i'm going to hit enter and bam there's our character right so now now we're basically just like it was with that little number list we were using but now we've got these cool graphical blocks and this is kind of like the tutorial didn't exactly give you the visualization on this so i thought well maybe i can add some value by showing this and make it a little bit more exciting okay so now what we can do is we can follow that simple pattern of erase by doing this screen blit thing but i need to change this back to replace it with the background tile and then at that same position, what's going on here? Argument one. Oh, okay. I just sent it the whole background list. I need to give it the background at that position of the, out of the list, the background tile that's at our current position that we're dealing with. Okay, so now it's effectively on that invisible layer. It's erased our our guy off the screen or gal or whatever. So we can run this display flip I can just click on that line and then hit enter and it will copy it down here for us and hit enter one more time to actually run it and then bam that's to show that yeah it raced with the background tile and then we can do our position which is at three that we're dealing with we can say hey position minus equals one which will decrement that position down to two so now it's now we're pointing at um, the third box over zero one two and we can say do all this same stuff split the player enter and uh there and then go ahead and uh where's that display flip and then the characters effectively moved over so sticking with that pattern like we did earlier we erase screen blip background position that's at the current position and then we move position minus one and then we blit the player and then we flip the display and there it went it moved just like that and we can keep following that pattern uh, erase the uh, replace 
Erase the character, replace with the background. Move the position down by one. And then split the player and flip the display. Do it one more time. See if it wraps around like it did with that list. Erase the player with the background. Change the position minus one and split the player. Flip the display. Nope, it didn't do it because it's not a list. So now this is just one of those little things where, you know, there's not as many givens. So you just have to kind of like, you'd have to compensate for that in your program if you really cared. You'd have to say, hey, um, if the player's, you know, effectively at zero, if their upper corner is at zero, zero or whatever, then, um, then either don't allow them to move or go ahead and paste them over on the far right or stuff like that. You know, you just have to deal with that in some some way or another. Not a huge deal. What we can do here is we're effectively, um, this is where we're at because we just flipped it. So it's showing us what the invisible one looked like. So we can just go ahead and do this one and make it plus one, which makes the position zero, the first tile there. And then we can say, hey, go ahead and blit the player. And go ahead and flip that invisible tile back. And there we go, we got our player back, just like that. So that's how we do that. And I think that about sums it up for this one. In the next one, I'm going to cover the other half. I thought it's a little bit too much for this one to cover. It goes into more of like a smooth scrolling effect, which is cool. So I'll do that in the next one. And before I let you go, I want to show you that uh, up here in the Python documents, like if, you know, of course, I found these, like I said, I found these by going to the main docs index and you just scroll down to tutorials and that one in particular was how, how do I move an image. This intro to Pygame one is really good for if you need a reference here. The only reason that's like that is because I doesn't have quite as much, but the line number should be on there like that. Um, this one was really good for me to reference along the way when I got stuck a couple times. I was like, oh, wait, how was I doing it? So I bounced back over here and looked for things like um, that tutorial I showed you that I was working from didn't have commands like this set display mode and, um, you know, maybe like this display flip and stuff. I didn't see that it was actually showing those specifically. So this is a good reference. And, you know, of course, like the major in it stuff, or you could just reference my stuff. But if you just want a quick little good source code direct reference and of course this ball in that demo if you remember it moves smoothly so this actually overlaps into which would be more of this stuff right here overlaps laps into that moving smoothly stuff and you can see right here they call the move and it's dealing with a rectangle um, it's a lot like that upper left corner thing but now you're dealing with like more of a rectangle and uh, I'll just I'll leave it at that it, it sort of gets slightly more complex but it just steps up that complexity just a little bit but the uh, reward of that is you can have smooth animation if that's something that you desire all right thanks a lot for watching